why is our location annoying today, Rachel? Because it's right in the middle of the map. <laughs> <laughs> So where are we going Rachel? So, this is a bit of a spontaneous walk, it's going to be made up as we go along. Mm -hmm. So we're starting there. I don't know where we are. We're here somewhere. We're over your pad, somewhere near the pub. There's Possibly the common, there. so we're next to the common. Where? I think we're somewhere around here. I don't think you're right about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's Martin here, Man of York. So me and Rachel are off on a hike from Rotherfield Pepard today. Just a short one. How, how many kilometres do you reckon it is, Rachel? Well, we're making it up as we go along, so I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, so it's quite a, a made up walk. Um, so it might be shocking for most of you to see the length of my hair at the moment. I had a go at uh, cutting my own hair, which was a real big mistake. I was trying to give myself short sides and long on top, but I kind of took off a little bit too much, and now I look like C3PO or something like that. But um, but yeah, but hair aside, I think it's going all right. And um, we're off on like a little hike to see uh, Peppard Woods, which is a woodland that we, a beach woodland that we saw on one of our other hikes from Rotherfield Peppard from a different direction. Oh, we want to see all the autumn colours. Yeah, so we wanted to see all the nice uh, golden leaves and things. So hopefully we should be able to get some nice photography today. So right, off we go. I can actually edit the slow motion on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> So as a means of a life update, uh, me and Rachel are still uh, enjoying our days out and things, but the weather's been absolutely foul recently, and so we have been kept in a little bit. So we spent quite a few days just sort of reading and, and watching things and stuff, and uh, not going out in the countryside, which is what we want to do. But you know, it's autumn, what can you do? But uh, we went to Suffolk for a week to see Rachel's family, and it absolutely chucked it down all week, and so we're stuck in for the whole thing. It was pretty rubbish. Um, but we did manage to go out last weekend, uh, to a little Cotswold uh, place called Broughton on Water, which is very twee and very uh, cute. Uh, lots of lovely Cotswold uh, stone and things. And um, it's just lovely, really. So we did that. And um, as a update on my job situation, um, I'm still not so sure what's going on yet. And uh, I, I'm told that I'll find out properly, maybe around the beginning of December, when there might be an interview, who knows. And uh, so I'll probably find out around Christmas. But anyway, I'm not going to let that get me down. So it's an absolutely gorgeous day today, uh, with lovely you know, red, golden leaves and things. It's got some lovely photographs, and um, autumn has been lovely this year. So yeah, I'm still jolly, which is my New Year's resolution to stay jolly no matter what. And so it's all going well. I would say jolliness, 90%. Hey Rich, I've got a question for you. 
based on 1 to 10, how enchanted or magical do you think the forest was last time we came to visit? The last time we came to visit, I'd say magicalness, 9.5 out of 10. 9.5? It was really the most high. magical wood I've ever seen. Oh my god, so out of 10, what would you say is the magicalness and enchantedness of a forest now in autumn? Right now? Yeah. 2 out of 10. Oh my god. <laughs> it's quite a gulf between those two scores, wow. Yeah. <laughs> enchanted and magical as, as before? Well, because before, in the spring, there was a magic canopy over the top, there was bluebells everywhere, light shining through really nice, and now they'd need to be fairies running up the trees to be <laughs> a truly magic enchanted wood to impress me wow. in my current mood. <laughs> <laughs> it's that bad? Yeah. So Rachel is in a little bit of an ER mood today in terms of a wood. <laughs> well, I think it's quite magical anyway. I think it looks quite nice. And there were some people actually uh, behind us and uh, they completely disappeared. So maybe they were... Elves. Pe yeah, elves or people from... Yeah, brownies. Some kind of like people from the other world, from, uh, from Welsh mythology perhaps. So yeah, I reckon it's still a little bit enchanted and magical. down so we might head back soon. So what are you eating there, Rachel? Soul cake. Yeah, that's right. So let's talk about the soul cakes. So I made these. Um, oh, oh. Okay, there we go. So I made these uh, special um, biscuits recently, and they're soul cakes, which are a a type of uh, a cross between a scone and a and a kind of a biscuit. And they date back to the 17th century when people used to go souling on. Um, All Souls Night, which is when, um, when kind of, um, which is the second of November, where essentially you would uh, pray for the souls of the dead, but also children would do an early form of trick or treating, where they'd go to people's houses, singing kind of All Souls Day songs, similar to caroling. So it's a cross between like caroling and um, and trick or treating, and then people would bake them up these soul cakes uh, in exchange for songs. But um, I got a recipe off this person on Instagram, who I can't remember her name, so I'm really annoyed about that. But I wrote it down and I made them and I managed to make a really good batch last week but then this week uh, I made like one batch which was far too overbaked and then one batch which was underbaked. Still so, tastes pretty good. Oh you still think it's good? I think they're still pretty awesome. I so. the underbaked one. The underbaked one. Yeah. I think the underbaked ones are better than the overbaked ones. Mm -hmm. So yeah they're pretty awesome. I'll put the recipe in the bucket down below.
So over here, if you remember my little mushroom foraging thing last uh, November, this is a an ink cap. And uh, as you can see, it's just gone unedible now because it's starting to melt into black slime. So they start to go all black and then they sort of like become this inky goop by the end of uh, November and into winter. But uh, you can eat them and I did eat some on that little foraging trip. Uh, but apparently if you mix them with alcohol, so if you have a glass of ale or something with it, then uh, you can hallucinate or even become nauseous. So uh, they are straight, have a strange uh, reaction to a mix of alcohol, but otherwise they're really tasty. So before I get in the car and um, we have our traditional book reading things, I forgot the flask by the way, which is pretty bad. So we can't have a cup of tea. Damn it! But um, uh, I thought I'd check out this strange depression because my archaeological senses are, are going. Because like, there's this weird depression just down here. I'll show you. You see that? It's kind of like this sort of dug out area and like right in the middle of a common and I just don't quite get why there's this huge almost excavation down here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to look it up um, when I get back and see if we can find out what it is maybe the Victoria County history will know or half of me or half of me is King's England books but yeah it's just sort of like thing. could it be like the old remnants of a fish pond, or an area that used to be a uh, certain extraction place, or somewhere you know, somewhere where they're extracting something, or or maybe old rabbit warrens or something. It's really unusual, just right in the middle of the common. But anyway, hopefully. So hopefully, we'll find out when I get back home. So what are you reading today, Rachel? Little Disasters. Okay. How many books have you read this week? I've read, this is my fourth. Oh my god. <laughs> so at the moment, Rachel is like really beating me when it comes to book reading. She's uh, just reading books really fast and I'm still on this book, which I spoke about in like a video ages and ages ago. Um, that's because like I, I stopped reading it for a little bit, but um, it's called The Necromancer and it's a, a kind of Penny Dreadful novel. And I started reading it again for October and oh my god, it's just, it just goes on and on. It has these four stories uh, within the t narrative and they just go, they're the exact same story each time except with different characters. And it's so tedious. And you can tell that he wrote this book just to uh, be paid for every single word or something because it's just uh, so tedious. It is pretty good though in terms of its uh, twists and turns and uh, and it has got that fantastic gothicness about it with necromancers and devils and things but uh, I just it's, it's, it's like getting through a, a quagmire in terms of just waffle and huge long paragraphs for no reason but I'm almost there I'm gonna get through it and read it. Reynolds himself by the way was quite interesting because he was um, 
a really popular writer in his time like he's a he's not that popular now but at, the t at his time in the Victorian era he was even more popular than Dickens and Thackeray and um and they really hated him as a result. He was also the guy who plagiarised Charles Dickens' Pickwick Papers and wrote an unofficial sequel called Pickwick Abroad. So uh, he was quite a villain in that respect, but also quite a good guy because he was a, a chartist and was trying to campaign for workers' rights as well. So a lot of his stories are kind of very political, but this one just keeps to be kind of gothic genre mainly and doesn't go off on one like his other stories. But still pretty cool. Anyway, we're going to head back now in just a bit after we've had a book read and uh, we're going to have a roast dinner tonight and uh, I was going to make the Christmas cake actually but um, it takes around three hours to, to bake so I might have to do that tomorrow night maybe but uh, we're going to get back and have our roast dinner now, okay? <laughs> So me and Rachel are back now, I'm just having a cup of tea before I start making the roast dinner. Um, I promised that I'd look up um, what those funny depressions were that I noticed in the middle of a uh, Rotherfield uh, Peppard. And uh, it turns out that actually they're Anglo-Saxon chalk pits, so apparently there's bigger uh, excavations all across the, the village and surrounding area from dating all the way back to the uh, old English times, where people used to dig out chalk to build their houses with. So. Uh, yeah, I knew that there was something archaeological there. Also, I learned that Royal Field uh, means cattle herd or cattle field, and so it was fallow land for cattle to graze on. And then Peppard comes from the, the ruling family, so the lords of the manor were known as Peppard as well. So it's always good fun to look up the, uh, the history behind these little places once you get back. So, um, yeah, so just uh, that was a really lovely walk uh, around that area, and uh, seeing the autumnal colours of the woods was really beautiful. I uh, noticed that some of the trees which really stood out, like I think uh, it might be the birch trees, which are really bright yellow leaves at the moment, they kind of, the leaves look almost like medallions falling from the sky when you take a picture of them in a, a low aperture, so I've got some really nice photos of that. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I know the format was a little bit different this time, and I hope you liked that. Um, also, for a little bit of market research uh, from you guys, is I'm trying to work out when is actually the best time for me to regularly post photos. So at the moment I kind of, uh, not photos, videos, sorry, um, post the videos. Uh, would you, like normally I post them on a Saturday morning, but when do you guys normally watch a, a Man of York video? When when would you normally tune in? Would you tune in on like a weekday or weekend? And uh, when should I post them really? So a little question for you guys in the comments and things. So anyway, I hope you all have a lovely evening and see you all soon. Bye.